This is part two of a two-part series with Luol Mayan. If you haven't heard episode one yet with Luol, please uh, check it out on Humentum's website or on our YouTube channel. And now, here's part two. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Humentum's podcast. I'm Caitlin Holland. I'm your host today, and I'm the content and storytelling lead at Humentum. And today, Luol Mayan is joining me yet again for episode two of his story. He is a former South Sudanese refugee who is now an entrepreneur, and he is building games, both video and board games, for peace and conflict resolution. So we're really excited to have him back for part two of his very inspiring story. Thanks, Luol, for coming back. Thank you. Uh, Something that's really sticking with me from our first conversation is how you were talking about using uh, children as, you know, tools for change and tools for peace, whereas they have been used in South Sudan and other areas, war-torn areas, as tools for war. So uh, that's really kind of what is at the heart, I think, of your your game building. And so we're really excited to talk a little more uh, this week about the games that you've built in order to do that. So uh, before we get into the specifics of your two games, I'm curious to hear kind of what goes into, what are the variables and the tools and the rules and things that you have to think about? What goes into actually building a game? You have this great idea. What do you do next? First of all, you know, you have to understand what you're addressing, you know, the problem that you're trying to solve. Because in every industry, we can use anything for, you know, as a solution to, to a problem. So to me, I feel like, you know, peace building is what actually the world is, you know, looking up to, like everywhere is war. You go to Syria, you go to South Sudan, like everywhere, like it's, it's more like even families, they need peace. So to me, I feel like, you know, peace building is something that is actually built over time. So because of the war and the conflict and, you know, violence that is happening everywhere. So to me, I feel like I need a long-term solution, something that actually can engage. Uh, sometimes I, I say, like, you know, we have to make peace as a product in a way that it's something that's going to interact with us. So it doesn't because, uh, as you said before, when I founded Genoop Game, it was, you know, I was trying to, you know, get up uh, a solution to what is happening to South Sudan. That is the same thing with uh, other organizations. We have different, you know, different tools that we are trying to use to, so uh, the same common goal. So and that's why, like at uh, at Umentum uh, conference, I was just trying to talk about more about how the organization can be able to use this tool, which is a video game. And as Genoop game was like an example, but as in our in our first, uh, focus right now is that we have to really talk on how this organization can be able to use because video game are a very exciting tool because. Um, a lot of people play them, and the problem is that the mass that believe in video game as a tool of change is not is not huge, is not big. So that's why it's very important for really for us to look into this and see like wh- how do we use this as something that is going to help like other organization, the humanitarian, and see how the game can be used for education, the game can be used for health, uh, the game can be used for anything. So to me, it was okay. Why not for peace? So why, why not use this video game for, for peace building? So the thing that you need to start up, a, you know, a video game or, you know, try to, to focus on your, on your goal. What do, you want to, what do you want to solve? What are the tools that you're going to be using to develop that game? Uh, what are your target audience? For example, in, in South Sudan, a lot of people have no access to uh, most of the computer game. So that's why I did my first uh, game as a mobile game because people can be able to access it. So, and to me as a self, as someone who, you know, I trained myself, I, I knew how to do some graphics, some, um, you know, you know, programming. So that's helped me to, to, set, to set up what I want and my goal. So you mentioned you built your first game in the refugee camps to use on mobile devices. What mm-hmm. was that first game? Can you talk about how you, how you started it, what it was called and how it was played and everything? I made a mobile game called Salam. Uh, Salam is an Arabic word that means peace. So uh, to me, I wanted the main goal for the game is to make a player to become a peacemaker 
back again when I was talking about the the Grand Theft Auto. So as like a, a game that I I played, you know, when I was so young, and it really helped me to get into the game industry. So the game is more of, you know, as a player, like what do you do? Like for example, in South Sudan, a lot of people were being killed. You know, a lot of people in in the refugee camp. There's famine. There's you know, there's no food. There is you know, there's there's a lot of things that I really want to address in the game more than just being a peacemaker. So the gameplay is that you know, as a player, you can play like two of you, three of you. So, but the game, the the main idea is that as a player, you have to stop people from being killed. Like a, a warrior comes and start like killing people. So for you. As a player, you have to stop that warrior from killing innocent people in the village. It's like it's a big wedge of war in in the scene of the game. So, but what you do as a player, you have to stop like the people from like being killed. From when you see someone is angry, you make sure you feed them so that they can be able to to leave. If you see like um, someone is stuck on the way, you make sure you cross them to you know to their destination. So the game was like to create an environment for the young people to be able to understand what is, you know, what is the reward of peace, which is like development after like you manage to help the people from being killed in the game scene. So then what happened is that the game congratulates you as a peacemaker. You know, it gives you like, you know, you know, encouraging you from, you know, going to the next step of being like a, a peacemaker. So the main idea of the game is like helping the people to understand, you know, about peace building, and how, you know, how about you find refugees that are hungry, like uh, you have to make sure you feed them, you give them food. And so that's like the main gameplay of, of Salam game. Okay, mm-hmm. great. And how did you distribute it? Like how did people, you said that there's yeah, rec uh, center. Right now, actually, um, we have like community centers in the refugee camp. They, I have the APK installed in some devices. They come and play. Uh, right now, I have it on AWS uh, already on the store. So someone can download it on on your phone and start playing it. Amazon Web Service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Right. And then what steps did you take after that? What was kind of your next development? After finishing the uh, the Salam game, which I'm actually working on the second version of it right now. Mm. So I'm developing the second version of, of Salam game. So I realized that, okay, there are a lot of people that have uh, no access to, to video game, have no access to mobile phone. So what, you know, for example, in a refugee camp, like all people who are actually part of the world, they, they, so I really wanted to bring something that can be able to help them understand what is the meaning of peace building and how they can be able to, uh, it can help them like in terms of conflict resolution, peace building. So I created um, a wider game, which is like a board game. So it's a physical game that you can play with cards, but the, the main idea is also for peace building and conflict resolution. So I managed to create another board game, uh, wider, which means unity in English. So most of my games are, are named in Arabic because Arabic is the most uh, common language used in South Sudan. Great. And wider is a board game. Is it also a video game? Yes, I'm working on a video game of it. Actually, it's like a game for peace. It has 95 cuts in it. It has coin you can use. You can, it has, you know food you can use to buy you can it has like i'm working on a on a building so like the way you play the game is it's really interesting is that uh you divide the game like you can play like two of you three of you four of you so the focus of the game is really helping people and a lot of people to understand what you know conflict resolution is and how you can be able to resolve like a conflict and then in it we also incorporated part of like peace building uh, in the game, for example, if I play a card of, of of war, so how is that going to affect you? So you need to have a card, uh, an action card to neutralize the war, so that action card can be peace. So when you when you able to when you're able to neutralize, you know, the war, that help you to to go to the next next stage. But if you cannot be able to neutralize the war. And then that war is going to kill your characters because you have your characters on your, you know, on your table, and you have to protect them. So if you cannot neutralize the war, and then that is going to affect your, your characters and die. And then if someone play like a card of 
kind of, you know, someone is hungry, so you have to feed them. So if you don't have something to neutralize or help them eat the food, so you, you use the coin in the game to buy the food so that it can be able to. So if I pick up a card of conflict resolution, which is more of the learning part of the game, so what happened is that there is also a deck of card that is actually only for conflict resolution. So I managed to pick up one card and read the question the question that is in that, for example, they can uh, the question may may be having like five scores and the question is asking you to list out five steps of how to resolve a conflict. So as a person you have to answer it. So if you don't answer it, it's going to lower your scores and you're going to lose the game. So the game help you to really interact. And for example, in high school, what are the causes of, of of conflict or how can you resolve this conflict? For example, if you have a coworker and you disagree on some kind of project, how do you react to that? So all are in the game. So you have to make sure that those those scores accumulate and if you have more scores, they can be able to restore back your your characters if your characters have been affected oh, okay. by the war. So these are it's more of a, a it's a physical game that help people really to understand what about like conflict resolution. For example, if you pick up a, a conflict resolution card that is actually requesting you on active listening. So then you know the good thing about it is not uh, when I talk to you and I you I listen to you and you talk to me. So you actually see like how do I listen to your story? Uh, then you you be able to give say okay, you've not been doing well, and I'm giving you three marks or three scores. The other person gets yeah, to grade yes, you. They, yeah, get okay. to grade you. But you have to tell me why you're grading me. So why, if you're giving me five scores, why then are you giving it to me? So that it helps people really uh, understand more about you know conflict resolution, the uh, the effect on the war, and that can be actually. Um, demonstrated in the game, which is really good. You also have your your city, which is Biol, and then that city is affected by by the war. For example, thing to do like like we have a secret uh, a secret card in the game, which you actually are supposed to keep it secretly. That is racism. If you have it, you make sure you don't tell it, and you have to replace it with almost ten cards. That's an effect to you. So that actually add to your like a card. penalty to it's you. It's a penalty to you. You, know, you. It's like a secret card. At the end of the day, you get rid of your cards, keep your community, al- you know, safe, and that's how you win the game. That's how you win. Okay. Yes. So your community is still safe, and you've safe. gotten rid yes. of all of your cards. Oh, yes. Yes. And you have a high score too. I have high scores. Imagine. Yeah. Okay. So the high scores actually help you to restore back your your characters and. So at the end, you actually win based yes. on how many characters um, you have left. How many left. characters you have left? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the game. If you could hold it up quickly, just for oh, yeah, great. And then let's open it it's up. The logo and the logo, yeah. Us, yeah. Oh, and then true pieces built over time. Over time, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we've got the game open. Uh, Luol, what are some of these pieces? I have the instruction for the game. You can read, <laughs> and I have a uh, deck of cards. Like there are ninety of them, so it's just like really big. And I also have like the these are the food coin you can use to, you know, to feed, you know, the people hungry in the game. You also have like the the coin you can use to, you know, to buy the food. Yeah, and who? So, how did you create all these different elements? I mean, did you do the art for them? Do you have people yeah, who work um, for you who do the digital art and things like that, or I'm what actually goes into like, it? <laughs> I'm actually a designer, so I create the, the ad myself. And Computer program, gr- and programmer, programmer and a designer. <laughs> yeah, like I, I told you before, like when Back I, of all trades. Yeah, like when I grew up in, in the refugee camp, like I we didn't have a choice. You have to, you know, you have to learn everything for you to come up with. Uh, with this. For example, if I could not uh, do graphics, if I could not uh, do other part of the game and only a game developer or a programmer, I could not create like a Salam game because... There are no graphic designers. There are no, you know, it was in the refugee, it was hard to find other people that can collaborate with you. So it was, it's kind of not good, but. <laughs> so you designed Wida, which is a board game, uh, and there's a video game component. And then Salam, your first game, was just a video game. Yeah. 
I'm wondering kind of what the different elements are and the different challenges of designing a board game versus a video game and how similar it is for you. Video game and board game are really so different and you know it depends on really your focus but to me I think developing Salam game was much easier than you know working on on the board game because board game has you know need a lot of resources you know you need to have to you know get it printed and you know the distribution become very hard because it's going to be a little bit expensive to distribute it but for for the video game you just you can work on it upload it on the store and people can be able to distribute it more much easier than uh, the board game so i think like a uh, board game take a lot of resources to to get it done and what got you interested in going the board game route deciding to build a board game after doing video games yeah because i i wanted to maintain the same idea of using the board game for for conflict resolution and then once is that um there's a lot of people who have no access to digital game in maybe in the refugee camp or the old people whom I'm actually trying to get them to get involved in terms of peace building so i feel like a uh, board game can be also a very good solution to some part of people who have no access to who don't play video game but love board game so it's more of the same you know focus but using different platform another thing is that uh the video game industry is really growing a lot in a way that uh in terms of like every year the devices that people use are not compatible for the type of video game that are coming up right now and like for example in africa uh almost maybe 60% of people use android phone like a lot of people use like android instead of iphone or high quality phone or high quality computers for example like there's a big computers that can you use for a specific game so but when you use like a board game it it help because it's anybody can can play it anybody can access it that's the advantage of using the board game as well so you mentioned distribution earlier yeah and i'm wondering if you know kind of how many people already are using the two games you've yes um, created. this is like uh for the salam game i really know like There's a lot of people uh, when I distributed uh, I had almost 2000 uh, people using it in the refugee camp like distributing it f- locally and then when I came here I uploaded it on AWS and we have almost like 10000 people right now who have downloaded it in oh, Kenya wow. yeah in Uganda so I use AWS to you know to find out the metric and 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 so on so I think like there's a lot of people using the the video game this like Salam game and then for the wider i did the first uh the first one in in uganda was fun like it was i distributed like few of them less than 300 copies but i made in uganda in a, in a simple quality but i think this this is like a better time right now to really count on how many people are going to play it yeah and how do you plan on distributing the board game now my my biggest plan is that uh will my i will sell the game in part of like in the us and give it for free to to the refugee so because like when someone in the us can be able to afford it and then i give a copy of it to someone in refugees so that that can be able to help me to cover up the the cost so it's more of trying to see like how do i cover it up and distribute it yeah yeah absolutely mm-hmm. that's great uh which you know between Salam and Wida and kind of the video game model and the board game model mm-hmm. which or what do you think the advantages are to each I guess towards teaching children about you know building peace and having that be the goal which is going to be more effective do you think? I think for the children they're going to love video game a lot because uh it it's it's something that they loved because there are a lot of video game that are so interesting which are actually like the same like Salam a lot of people ask me like how do you think people are going to get interested in playing your video game for peace which i think is a very good question because uh, more people want something that is more uh, high design someone would prepare playing playing like grand theft auto rather than playing uh, my salam game because of the quality of design of the design and that's why i i love it so much because uh, when i designed the salam game like the characters the you know the gameplay is and that's why i incorporated the war part of it because people you know they want to see what what is your action 
So the action part of the game will help people to, you know, to play the, the video game. So I think the video game is more highly going to be played by the, by the young people. Since you've been here, have you had some partners or um, funders, kind of people working with you to help develop the games or even other people helping with the art or, you know, who, who's who been kind of your team since yeah. you've been in the, the United States? That's, that's a good question, actually, because uh, when I came here, I went to GDC in San Francisco that helped me to... That game development, yeah, GDC? Yeah, yes, Game Developers Conference. It's okay. one of the biggest uh, game, game developers conference in the world. So mm-hmm. I went there, I was invited, and... I managed to connect with uh, a lot of game developers. I have friends in in Austin that are helping me to contribute to my current uh, Salam game in terms of uh, development. So I'm not alone right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's like we are trying to bring up something high. And when I go to most of the game conferences, I talk much about using video game for peace. So it become like uh, so that I I'm not the only company or person that is making game for peace. So I try to talk to developers to start like creating their own game for peace because that will actually help uh, the industry, the game for peace industry to grow. So it shouldn't be like me like working on video games. So that's actually most of the thing that I am doing right now, trying to debocate and talk with the, the, the industry, the independent game developers to look into this because the world is right now focusing on peace building, which is actually... Uh, the most sustainable like goal for the UN. So it's like getting innovative way of peace building. So I cannot do it alone. So it I need like other mass the organization to start like using the video game for anything for v for for education for peace for conflict resolution for you know there's there's a lot we can do for health. So there's a lot we can do for uh, with, with video game. So you're not worried about competition. Yeah, you're, you're, encouraging. <laughs> you're encouraging. You're yeah, encouraging yeah, competition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I encourage a lot because I want to see. I want people. I want the game industry to to be more than what people think it is right now. So, but one person can do it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So you want to see the change? And it should the be change, a com- uh, community, yeah. a community yeah. thing. Which is the biggest problem because um, the the problem I face a lot is that uh, most of the organization should actually. S- you know, invest into the video game, but still, they have the fear in it. They, they don't have the outcome. So, when when I talk to most people, you know, they say, "Oh, video game for peace." Like, what kind of game has have been done before? So, which is like something new, and it is actually a problem because it is hard for you to get the funding because a lot of people have no. They still, it's it's something new. So, what's next for you? Next for me. Um, Right now, uh, my main focus is like complete the game, distribute the game, and work on my Salam game and more other. Uh, you know, I may have another game for health. I, that's what I'm trying to look into right now. Um, health. Yeah, personal hygiene in the refugee camp. So that's my next uh, project. So it's actually exciting because right now I got help from Pendleton. He's a creator of Adventure Time. He's one of the biggest. A cartoon in in the U.S. It's the biggest, like everyone knows about it. So, and he's he's a very good friend of mine who is going to create characters for my game for the health, uh, for personal hygiene. So it is my biggest game that I'm going to. Really oh wow! With. What format will that game be in? The health game is that going to be a video game video or game, yeah. video a video game. game? Yeah, yeah. So, like for example, when you go to the refugee camp, the there's a lot of problem like. Um, cholera, like disease that we get from, you know, personal hygiene. So I want these children to really learn more about how to brush their teeth before they go to school, how to clean up. So I want the video game to address that. For example, if you're playing the video game and you want to go and play football, you have to unlock it first before <laughs> you go play football. So it becomes like a tool that actually uh, gives you the access. It's like, for example, I have a scene where you have to play football in the in the game so for you to do that first you have to clean up you have to do something physically then then the game unlock that so you have to brush your teeth to yeah, unlock yeah, the next level the next which level. is football yeah, which is football yeah <laughs> so that's yeah and we know how important football is yeah, in the refugee very, very kids important. for all the kids yeah <laughs> very important yeah that sounds great yeah, i can't thanks. wait to see that yeah you mentioned salam has a second edition coming out yeah 
but what will that be focused on? Kind of the same as the first? Yeah, the same as the first, but uh, adding more because uh, I've got feedback from people, what they want in the game, what uh, what I need to add on the game. Yeah, and I have to do that. Great. Right. <laughs> so when you come out with these new games, the Salam 2 and the new uh, health video game, where can people access those? Well, right now I have my website, which is junoobgame.com. So I have all my information and yeah. Right. So people yes. can also get in touch with you if they're interested in learning yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Subscribe after this. and yeah. Tune up games. And are you on social media? Yeah, Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Lol Michael is my Twitter handle. Okay, great. Yeah. Good to know. I'm sure people are going to be interested to, to hear more. Yeah, LinkedIn is Lol Mayen. So those are my two big ones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you would want to add or kind of ask of our listeners today? What I can say is that uh, I'm really excited to be you know, here today. And it's a great thanks to Umentum for giving me the opportunity you know, to talk today. And then uh, you know, being a mass that believes in video game as a tool of change is something very important. And then uh, what I can say is that you know, your organization can use game for, for anything, whatever your organization is is your goal, your mission. You can use game for, for whatever you want to achieve. So it's not good for us to take video game in a different way. So we, it's very important for us to take them as a, as a tool that we for learning for, you know, for, for anything that we want to achieve. So it's important. Uh, I would say, yeah, uh, it's, it's good to use the game for in your organization. I can use them and yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, all organizations, Humentum included, I think, are always looking yeah. for new ways to be innovative and in mm -hmm. how they try and create, you know, social change uh, and impact for for social good. So I think mm -hmm. you're a true the, your work is a true example of that, Luol. And uh, we're extremely grateful that you're able to come talk to us today. Uh, so you have much. a really inspiring story, and uh, I know that people are going to be interested in following up yeah, <laughs> after they you. hear it. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you all for uh, joining, listening to this podcast. Uh, please subscribe. And we would love to hear your thoughts about this two-part series as we're just getting this, this podcast series going. So uh, stay tuned for more podcasts with speakers like Luol. Once again, thank you so much, Luol, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.